Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery. It's great to be with you this Wednesday morning, July 31st, 2024. It's great to visit with you most weekdays. As I mentioned a moment ago, we will not have a Zoom tomorrow on Thursday, the 1st of August, due to a travel and a board meeting. But today we're going to talk about why, yet, yet, well, let's rewind. So yesterday we talked about the Opportunity Fund, and we're going to take another step deeper into this. Had a lot of really positive feedback from a number of you as we took more of a, a deep educational financial literacy building approach to yesterday's topic. So we're going to follow that up today with some deeper topics that really, as an affiliate, do you need to know? No, but we believe the more you know, the better off you are. So our topic is shown, and I'll, I'll stretch this out as we go through the agenda, why we believe that you should recommend the Opportunity Fund to all of your clients and prospects. So now we're looking at this as an action step that's going to help your clients and or prospects as well as yourself. So it's a win-win scenario. They're not winning at, at your, your loss or vice versa. So what hopefully everyone's familiar with is that we developed the Opportunity Fund to create daily deposits into clients' business bank accounts. So the opportunity fund, because let's go back to yesterday. We talked about there's only three sources of capital to start or grow a business, only three. Now, under each of those three, there, there's variations, but there was debt, equity, and earned income. If you wanted to add a fourth of gifts and grants, you could, but but normally you wouldn't build a capital raise strategy dependent upon gifts and grants. Normally not. So we set that aside. So any money that a client needs to start or grow a business is going to need to come from some combination, as we discussed yesterday, from debt, equity, and or earned income. And there's nothing wrong with mixing all three. So the opportunity fund is clearly the third of those three. It's money that does not need to be paid back, but it has many other very specific benefits that we're going to go through and identify today. So you're well versed in why we think that you should be offering the opportunity fund to all of your clients and prospects. Now, of course, before we get into the, the perspective from your clients, it's great for you. Because what happens when you sign up an affiliate? You get an override. So they get paid, but you get an override. So that is a, a great win-win scenario. And some of you are being even more aggressive than that. So what some of you have established as your best practice is that when you have a client that's interested in signing up, some of you are signing them up First, as an affiliate, so you're the master affiliate, they're signing up as an affiliate, and then allowing the client to sign themselves up under their affiliate link. You're still getting the overrides, but now they've reduced their cost of capital in half. Hopefully that makes sense, if not. But you know, we charge a 10% performance fee for the capital raise. Half of that goes to the affiliate that brought the client and then there's the two-point override. So of the 10 points, five points goes to the affiliate, two points goes to the master affiliate. So theoretically, if you wanted to do what's in best interest of your client, before you allow them to sign up, you would bring them in as an affiliate, then they can sign up themselves, they get the five points, and you still get the override. Hopefully that made sense. If not, we can drill into it. But now we're going to talk about what some specific benefits are to the client. So we understand at an underwriting level, as far as how you and I are helping your clients become fundable, how this really applies. So number one, monthly revenue. So what, what are we talking about? Why it's in your best interest to help your clients participate in the opportunity fund whether it be before they sign up as a client or after, the, the timing is, is up to you. But number one, monthly revenue. So the underwriting of most lenders 
recognize that the greater the revenue of a business borrower, the more they can qualify for. And, and that just makes so much sense, right? So if you own a small business and you're bringing in 100000 a month versus no income yet, which business do you think has more borrowing capacity? All other things being equal. Of course, the business that has more monthly revenue because they have the ability to pay a bigger monthly debt bill. So maybe that seems obvious, but if we actually apply that obvious statement, what does it mean? It means that the more that you and I can help, your clients have documented monthly revenue, the bigger funding they can get. That's great for them, but it's also great for you, right? Because you're making an override on their funding. So if you could make an override off of, let's just say, a million dollars versus 100000 that's 10 times as much money for you, plus the client's more satisfied because they got a bigger loan. So the first benefit of you recommending to all of your clients and prospects to participate in the Opportunity Fund is that it will help your client's monthly revenue. There's many other reasons. I think we have seven total to go through. Any question on number one? It's simple, right? So if you're, if any borrower has more monthly revenue, they have more borrowing capacity than if they have less revenue. Kind of obvious, but this is a very proactive way you and I can help your clients become more fundable so they get more funding and then you get more overrides. Make sense? Okay, let's move on to number two. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, just type it into the Q&A and we'll address it. So number two, separate from monthly revenue, specifically on cash flow. Many lenders want to look at the cash flow of the borrower. So, so what does that mean? Not just in a monthly basis in terms of how much deposits went in to the borrower's bank account, but also how is the cash flowing through and how does the borrower manage their cash flow? You, you've probably seen this with some people that lack a little bit of a business sophistication. Every time they get a deposit into their business account, man, it's spent. And they're just always getting that balance down to zero. And, and we'll talk about balances a little bit more in a moment. Or do they maintain a decent average daily balance? So lenders typically now, not in all cases, typically are going to actually go take a snapshot of the activity inside of the borrower's bank account, not just the month-end report, to see how the borrower is managing their cash flow. But guess what? If the borrower has no money coming in, there's not much to manage. So that obviously is another reason why we would recommend that you encourage all of your prospects and clients to participate in the Opportunity Fund, which is the same as the affiliate program, so they have more cash flow to manage. Make sense? Okay, because we're what we're doing today is we're looking at it from the lender's perspective. So no offense, it really doesn't matter what you think, and it really doesn't matter what I think. We're discussing how lenders see borrowers. And we're, we're trying to expose at a, a greater level of detail so the light bulb goes off. Oh, shoot, I should be getting all of my clients to be an affiliate under me because you should be a master affiliate. You can be a master affiliate for free and you get a landing page that looks just like this. So that way you're able to help your clients become more fundable in these different points we're talking about. So we're going to help your client have more monthly revenue. We're going to have them have more cash flow. And I, I know those are similar, but technically they're, they're separate items. Let's move on to number three. NSFs, which stands for insufficient funds. So that is reflected that when you're, you've got a bank account, whether it be personal or business, and you allow it to go below zero. And at that time, a payment doesn't clear. So it's returned as unpaid insufficient funds. So just like lenders want to see the borrower's monthly revenue, which you and I can help them boost their monthly revenue, just as lenders want to see the cash flow, which you and I can help your clients boost their cash flow, we can also help avoid NSFs, 
we don't want to have NSFs on our bank account. That shows that we're not good financial managers. Now, typically it happens because we don't have enough money coming in to pay our bills. But you and I need to help increase their money and then also remind them don't have any insufficient funds. Sounds kind of obvious, but again, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm peeling back the layers of the onion so you know what the underwriting elements that lenders look at. So they look at monthly, most, there's not a universal truth. Different lenders look at different things. But most will look at monthly revenue, and that'll impact the revenue will determine or impact how much the borrower can pay back, how big the loan can be. They'll look at the borrower's cash flow, and they'll also look to see if there's been any NSFs. Is there more? Yep. Negative balance. And I know three and four kind of go together. But specifically, when the, bar, when the lender goes into the borrower's bank account and is looking around, one of the things that they're looking for, were there any instances where the client's bank account went into the negative? went into the negative. That obviously is another sign of riskiness. So NSFs is when we paid something that didn't clear and it came back. That's a sign of risk. And even if we didn't have something that came back, if we went into the negative, that is a sign of riskiness. Seems obvious, but these are some of the specific elements that many borrowers are going to look at. So what we're trying to do, you and I, what we're trying to do is help our borrowers look good and strong financially so they can get approved for as much funding as they want. The more funding they get, the happier they are, and the more you make because you're getting paid from the money they raise, either directly if they signed up directly with you or through overrides if you made them a sub-affiliate of yours and then you get the master affiliate override. Okay, if there's any questions or comments, type them into the Q&A. Here's another one that some people overlook, but it's, it's important, and it's monthly deposits. So again, this is another element that many lenders will look at when they're evaluating the riskiness of an applicant. So they're not just looking at revenue, they're not just looking at cash flow, NSFs, or negative balances, but they're also saying within a 30-day period, how many deposits? deposits does the borrower or the applicant have? You know what they like to see? At least five to seven per month. So if, if we have clients, even if they have good revenue, even if they have good cash flow, no NSFs and no negative balances, we want to also try to ensure that they have at least five to seven deposits per month. Now, we could try to interpret why this is important, but it, it's probably obvious, right? So let's say that you have a client and they just get one big deposit each month. Well, if that's the case, what happens if something's disrupting that one big deposit? Well, they're probably going to go broke or have some horrendous cash flow challenges. Instead, the more deposits they have, the less risky they are. That's kind of a common sense thing. But just so you know, going down to the granular level, typically lenders like to see at least five to seven deposits. Well, the way that we have the opportunity fund set up, which, which is the affiliate program, I think you all understand they're one and the same, we pay out daily. Now, we don't pay out Saturdays and Sundays. But theoretically, your clients could have 20 deposits per month, as could you, 20 deposits per month. Don't need 20. We don't have to have a deposit every day, but we do want to strive to have at least five to seven deposits. And again, no offense. If you don't agree with this, it doesn't matter. If I don't agree with this, it doesn't matter. We're going through some underwriting nuances so you can be better prepared to motivate your clients or prospective clients to also be an affiliate underneath you so they can be more fundable. And, and also, it, it's some pretty good lessons that you may want to look at your business as well. All right, let's move on. So number six is a little bit broader, but, but again, it's still worthy of a separate discussion. Improved, uh, I'm sorry, improved financials. 
even for early stage businesses, so businesses that have just recently formed, the stronger the financials, the more borrowing capacity they have. I think so often we run in, well, I don't think, I know, so often when we talk to clients and if they have a new or newer business, somehow they think that they're above the underwriting. Oh, it doesn't apply to me because I have a new business. It doesn't matter if I have monthly revenue because it's a new business. Well, a new business would give an excuse why we haven't had good revenue in the past, as opposed to a business that's been around that hasn't had revenue. But is having revenue better than not having revenue from an underwriting perspective? Of course. So we should strive for that. Does cash flow matter even for a new business? Of course. Does number three and number four apply to a new business? Maybe even more to an existing business, because in the absence of much revenue or cash flow, if we're already going into the negative, that's horrible, freaking horrible. Monthly deposits. So you could argue, well, it's a brand new business. How would they have deposits? We we can we're entrepreneurs, right? You're an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. What do we do? What, what gets us up in the morning? To go solve problems and make money. There's lots of ways legally and ethically to solve problems and make money. If you don't have any way to make money right away, then what we recommend is get your profile up on Fiverr or Upwork, gig working sites. Post yourself as a management consultant Normal hourly rates is 250 to 375 an hour and start doing some side consulting work while you're building your business because we, we need to be strong. Now, some people don't want to be a consultant or don't necessarily have the background. Being an affiliate is a no brainer, right? Because there are no prerequisites to be an affiliate. You get a landing page, you don't do any sales, you refer people to the landing page, you make five points of the capital rates. But with that being said, financials matter. So what are the, the two or three most important financials? Well, in my opinion, number one is the balance sheet. That shows the business's assets and liabilities. And again, you could say, oh, now, Tom, you don't understand. This is a new business. That doesn't apply. Hell yes, it does. We need to have a strong balance sheet, even if the business was just formed. And that's what we do together, right? So we are able to legally and ethically transfer assets over to the client's balance sheet. So legally and ethically, they look strong. There's no reason to go apply for funding with a weak balance sheet. It's kind of like the kiss of death, right? So we want to show lenders, yes, we have collateral to pledge. The other two financials would be the profit and loss, also called income statement and cash flow statement. But most importantly, and, and I guess I could have been more specific when I prepared this, the balance sheet really matters because it demonstrates what collateral the borrower can pledge. If the client doesn't have enough assets to pledge, we can subsidize that and provide it to them legally and ethically. And then number seven, liquidity, which, which I know many of these kind of overlap, but let's say you have a client and they open a new business for the purpose of funding, which is fine, nothing wrong with that. And they go put $25 or, or even $100 in their new ba business bank account. Does that make them appear liquid? No, it, it's horrible because most lenders, again, not all, but most lenders are going to go look at that bank account and say, well, what's the, what's the current balance? 100 bucks. I want to borrow a million dollars if I got a hundred bucks to my name. How does that make sense? There's not even enough in the business bank account to cover the first payment. Now, I'll tell you where fool's gold is. Fool's gold is where we think, well, yeah, if I borrowed the money, though, then I'd have enough to pay it back. That doesn't resonate well with lenders at all. Where What you're telling the lender in, in that expression is, well, the only way I can afford to pay this back is to borrow the money. That doesn't sound good. It, it, just, it really doesn't make sense. It may make sense to the borrower, but it doesn't make sense to the lender at all. So liquidity matters. And there's actually what's called bank rating, which we kind of alluded to. I don't, I don't think it's, no, it's not on there. Let me go ahead and pull this down. So bank ratings are a calculation that, that simply put is based around the average daily balance. And again, I understand a lot of times you and I are working with early stage businesses that are not cash rich. That's okay. We're, we're not trying to 
filter people out that are less fortunate than maybe yourself. But the bottom line is, if, if we can absorb and assimilate what we're discussing, that businesses are more fundable with more revenue. Businesses are more fundable with more cash flow. Businesses are more fundable if they don't have NSFs and negative balances. Businesses are more fundable the more monthly deposits they have, and at least five to seven is always recommended. Of course, businesses are more fundable the stronger their financials, which we can take care of the balance sheet. Businesses are more fundable the more liquid they are. So if a client comes to you and, and they're not really strong financially, we don't want to turn them away. That, that's exactly who we're here to help. But it's not just saying, okay, we're going to help you go get a loan, but we're going to help you get strong enough, credible enough, fundable enough to qualify for a loan. And financial aspects matter. A lot of times entrepreneurs, they're, they're, they're so emotionally involved with their business that they sometimes can't step back and say, well, I wonder how a lender would see my business. Would a lender see my business as credible and, and fundable or would they, they see the business as risky? Well, I'm giving you some great insight, which you might have already known. Here are some key elements that lenders look at. But the great news is you, can I, you and I can help any client, any client look strong in all these seven areas. And by making them look strong, you make money. The Opportunity Fund is essentially a new revenue stream for each client, if they need it, to be strong in these areas. And we do that through the affiliate program. And with you being the master affiliate and your client being the affiliate, the stronger they are, the stronger you are with passive income. So let's, let's get over to questions, comments, concerns. And of course, if you need assistance, give us a call. And, and we'll talk and resolve it. But using the Q&A box, question and answer box, it's like a chat box of Zoom. What's your feedback on what we covered today? Did, did you know these seven items were important? So Annette, did, did you have these seven items on the top of your mind? Dorethea, David, Eric, Gilbert, Greg, Harold, Jeanette, I'm looking for feedback in the Q&A. Is this new information? Is this valuable? Or did I literally just waste 22 minutes of your time? I'm, I'm curious of feedback because what we're trying to do is provide more practical information. That, again, as an affiliate, what do you need to know? You need to know you have a landing page and refer people to it. But a lot of you seem to have a desire to want to know more, which is great. And so here we are really breaking down what lenders look at. But please don't wrongfully infer not all lenders have the same underwriting. Not all lenders look at all these same elements. And lastly, not all lenders look at these same elements with the same amount of importance. In general, and, and we can add it here. So in general, there's what we call the three C's, right? Credit, which we're talking about business credit mainly. There's collateral, and then there's capacity, which is uh, kind of meaning cash flow. In general, the three C's is what we need to know to anticipate our, do we have a fundable business? But again, different lenders place a different importance on the different C's, and there certainly are some lenders that do not require all three C's. In fact, there are some lenders that will solely base underwriting off just one of the three C's. But in general, what you and I try to do is, and I believe we do do, is create fundable businesses by improving all three C's. Today, our focus was, well, how can we help them with their capacity? There's actually a couple other things that we can do to help with that third C, one of which is making sure that your clients are not self-employed. And, and this goes for you, and you, you may not like what I'm about to say, but if you're self-employed, you're making a mistake. You should not be self-employed, and none of your clients should be self-employed. All of us should have a job, a W-2 paying job. But that job should be through the business that we own. Because when we're a W-2 employee of our own business, we get usually weekly paychecks, 
direct deposited into our bank account. That makes us look a lot risk, less risky to lenders than if we're self-employed. You might say, well, that seems like semantics. It's, it's kind of the same. It's all about how we look on paper. So legally and ethically, you are a, forgive me for saying this, you are a fool if you're self-employed. And you might say, well, Tom, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm a 1099. I'm an insurance agent. I'm a real estate agent, whatever. Then take that 1099 income, put it into your business, set up a payroll account, like with QuickBooks Payroll, and pay yourself every Friday a paycheck. That is going to have many, many benefits, and that certainly makes the client more fundable. We often see, especially on that first tranche, where people come to us for the first tranche, the first round of funding, and they often, well, I shouldn't say that often, they may not get as much as they think they should get based upon how they're set up, even with the same credit score. You could take two people, two people, both with a 720 credit score or a 680 or a 650, whatever the credit score, but two people have the same credit score. But how they are paid makes a difference. And this is interesting. Maybe you don't know this. If, if you are an employee, the more often that you're paid, the less risky that you are. So don't pay yourself W-2 once a month. Pay yourself, I recommend, every Friday. Direct deposits every Friday. Weekly pay is seen as less risky for a lot of the same reasons we talked about before. So as a person, you should have four deposits in your personal bank account per month. Once, Well, sometimes five, depending upon the month. But um, once a week, just typically Friday, make it payday and pay yourself. And that's, that's what I do. And that's how we pay our employees. And that's how we recommend all of our clients. Don't be self-employed. You're a fool to be self-employed. You'll end up paying more taxes in general. You'll be much more likely to be audited. Be an employee of your company. But that's advice as an individual. As a business, we know that rev monthly revenue, cash flow, NSFs, negative balances, monthly deposits, strong financials, and liquidity matter. But it's, it's not. It's not. It's not about filtering people out and asking them these questions like, oh, you don't pass. Go away. No, we want to help the imperfect clients. That, that's really why we got the grant. That's why we're here. But what I wanted to bring to your express attention, top of mind awareness, is you and I can help these individuals become stronger on that third C while you're financially benefiting. Because, again, if they don't have some other way to go make money, maybe they say, well, no, you don't understand. I've got to go borrow money so I can get equipment or inventory or whatever it is for them to start their business. Well, fine. Why don't you do some consulting first? You have industry expertise, put your profile up on Fiverr or Upwork, set your hourly rate, 250, 275, 300, 350, whatever you want, and be a consultant to other entrepreneurs. Some people aren't comfortable doing that. Okay, well, if that's not an option, then become an affiliate, right? We'll get you a landing page. Didn't look like this. This is the landing page for you to feed in affiliate. So action steps as we close out. If you are not a master affiliate, you need to get with Charlotte, right? Charlotte is the affiliate manager. If you are not a master affiliate and you don't have a landing page that looks like this, you need to get with Charlotte, the affiliate manager, right away and say, hey, Charlotte, uh, Thomas was talking about why I should be a master affiliate, which cost you nothing, by the way, and uh, she can help get you set up. Now, if you're not, you do need to be an affiliate to be a master affiliate, just for full transparency. So if you're not an affiliate, give us a call and we'll get you set up. And then once you're an affiliate, then you can become a master affiliate. You'll have a landing page that looks like this. It's coded to you. So then when you have clients or prospects, they can become an affiliate themselves. You get overrides. That's that's clear, right? But what we wanted to accomplish today is more than they get paid, you get paid. It literally affects their fundability through these seven elements. So you're not just helping them make money. Right? That, that, that sounds kind of like a pitch here. Come sell some vacuum cleaners and we'll make money. But making money for what you and I are working with them on is incredibly important for, in fact, seven different reasons. And the great thing is the more fundable they are, the more money they make, the more money you make. It's a win-win. 
All right, so again, no Zoom tomorrow because we have a board meeting. Call us if you need help with anything. Uh, if you're already an affiliate, you should be calling probably Charlotte, but if you're not an affiliate, call us. We'll get you plugged into the Opportunity Fund. We'll make you strong on paper if you want funding, and then we'll help your clients be strong on paper so they get more funding, you get more, more commissions. Thanks, everyone. See you on Friday. No Zoom tomorrow. Bye-bye.